The first time I saw Shane, I was out on the porch, planting petunias. I was putting on a show of planting flowers, but truly I was watching Bobby play down by the corral. These days, I never take my eyes off my boy. You could smell summer coming. I looked up to breathe it in, and I saw the child go stock still. What is it, son? A stranger on a horse, way off. Which way is he heading? I can't tell yet. I followed his gaze through the clear Wyoming air, far down the road where it swings into the valley from the open plain beyond. Joe, Joe, look, there's a horseman. Yeah, I see him. What, do you think he's another roughneck for Fletcher? Pa, he's moving again. Oh, he rides easy. He's heading our way. Marion, wait at the door. He wore dark trousers tucked into tall boots with a wide leather belt at the waist. He was clean shaven and his face was lean. I thought he was just another stray horseman. Just another stray. I'd appreciate a chance at your pump for myself and the horse. Use all the water you want, stranger. Would the lady mind if I picked one of her flowers? Marion? You're welcome to. He bent low and snapped the stem of one of my petunias, then tucked it into the band of his black hat. Thank you, ma'am. I'll be on my way. Don't be in such a hurry, stranger. Fruit will be on the table soon, and you can bed down here for the night. My name's Starrett. Joe Starrett. This here's my son, Bobby. You were watching me for quite a spell coming up the road, Bobby. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I like that. A man who watches what's going on around him will make his mark. Can I help you with the horse, mister? Can I carry your saddle roll? Carry away the dust? Don't touch that. Here. Take the bridle. What's your name, mister? Call me Shane. Well, come inside, Mr. Shane. I hope you're hungry. More gravy, Shane? No, thank you, Bobby. <clears throat> Where'd you say you were coming from, Shane? Uh, I'm riding through. Taking each day as it comes. It looks like you made yourself a real spruce plot. That's Joe. He's all for the modern ways. Well, the thing to do is pick your spot. Your little piece of land. Enough crops to carry you. A small herd bred for meat. Good meat. Fenced in and fed right. Much better than them long-legged scraps Mr. Fletcherless range on the other side of the river. <laughs> Who's Fletcher? Ah, a rancher. He thinks we small settlers are nothing but nuisances. He's been grumbling ever since we've been here. Shane, we had a man who worked with Father, but Fletcher's men routed him out. Bobby, time for bed. Aw. Goodbye, Shane. Shane will be here in the morning, Bobby. You will stay the night, won't you, Shane? You can bed down in the barn. <clears throat> Must say that fine spread's made me sleepy. Best dinner I had on my journey, ma'am. Thank you. I'll make my way to the barn. Yeah, I'll walk with you. See, there's no troublemakers out. I never saw a man quite like him before. But there's something about him. Something underneath the gentleness. Something... What kind of something? Mysterious. But more than that, dangerous. 
mean, he's dangerous, all right, but not to us. How can you be sure? That first night, I swear I could hear our hearts beating. Everything was quickened in us. A man on his tired horse rides out of who knows where. A stranger, right now, a bed in our barn. A horseman riding in. And he would have ridden right out of our lives, too, if it hadn't been for the weather. Here, take one of these, Shane. See you on your journey. That looks like a fine flannel cake. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> he calls them flannel cakes. <laughs> you gave yourself away, Shane. Joe guessed you were a southerner. I was. I've been fiddle-footed since I was 15. <laughs> Gotta be heading out now, too. Ah, oh, your horse looks beat. Stay another day. That's a sensible dog. You like having another mouth to feed, don't you, Mary? I've been waiting for an excuse to try a deep dish apple pie I've heard tell of. And you must tell me, Shane, how the ladies are wearing their hats in Cheyenne nowadays. The rain stopped! Huh. Well, I, uh, I should be heading out. Well, road's soggy. Won't be fit. Come on, Shane. I'll show you what this hopscotch climate does to my alfalfa. You can almost see the stuff growing. doing a fine job with this place. Well, this here tree stump is one full thing I haven't licked yet. But I will. What is it, Shane? Who's this? Last Jake Ledger. <laughs> I thought he'd get up this way this week. Have you the cultivator for me, Ledger? It's here. A beauty, like I said, the best buy I've toted this hall. See? All right, what's the tariff? It cost me more than I figured when we was talking last time. You might think it a bit steep. I don't. Handles so easy, even the boy will be using it before long. Pin it down. I asked you a question. I'll shave the price, take the loss to please a good customer. I'll let you have it for 110 There was one like that in the store in Cheyenne. List price $60. Did anyone ask you to push in on this? No. I reckon no one did. Forget what he says, Starrett. Heard of him half a dozen times along the road up here. Just a stray wandering through, probably chased out of some town and hunting cover. I'm surprised you'd let him hang around your family. You might be surprised at a lot of things. Now give it to me straight on the price. Are you going to stand there and let that tramp nobody knows call me a liar? Are you going to take his word over mine? Yes, Ledyard. I'm taking his word. He's my guest. I can figure men for myself. I'll take his word on anything he wants to say, any day of God's whole year. Take 80 or leave it. Then get off my land. It's a deal. It's a deal. That's when they started on the tree stump. Now you, Joe. Now you. You. This the way they wear them in the city? Well, aren't you fellas gonna look at me? Yeah, just about. Only the brims are wider. Hmm. Joe Stark. Hat or no hat, you're the nicest thing on God's green earth. Now stop bothering us, woman. Bobby, come with me. Oh, Ma! Come on now. Did you see Shane's eyes, Ma? It was like ice or, or fire. I was frightened. It makes me feel a little that way, too. Another apple, please. 
Here. Thank you. <laughs> I hope Pa knows what he's doing. Can I go now? Long job scrubbing and peeling and chopping the apples for a dish this deep, ain't it? It's ready for the stove now. Open the door for me, son. Careful now. That's it. <clears throat> They're still at it, Ma. Go on, fill the wood box with stove lengths, then you can go. <clears throat> what has gotten into those two? Mother, hurry! You've got to come! You've got to see it! They're getting it out! The old stump was on its side. Its roots against the glow of the sun sinking behind the far mountains. And two men, looking over it into each other's eyes, saying nothing. Joe, big and square and solid. Shane, lithe and light like a cat. Ma'am, being a farmer has more to it than I thought. Hmm. Now I'm ready for some of that pie. Oh, oh, you men, you made me forget about it. It's probably burnt. <laughs> There's no call to start again, Marion. No. Mm. Oh, that's prime pie. Mm -hmm. That's the best bit of tree stump I ever tasted. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, why are you so angry? Only with myself, Bobby. Now off you go to bed. I'll be along soon to tuck you in. <sighs> Gentlemen, your dishes, please. There. Now close your eyes. Ma, why does Shane have to keep everything about him so secret? He must have something he wants to forget. Must be something very bad. Shh. Go to sleep now. Tomorrow we have to let our mystery visitor go. Mm hmm. Some people you can't pin down, Bobby. And Shane's one of them. I wish he'd stay. He'd be my friend. I'm turning the lamp out now. Close your eyes. Shane's not one of us. Now sleep. Shane! <clears throat> Joe, uh, before you go anywhere, I have a question to ask you. Are you running away from anything? Not in the way you mean. Good. Hey, look. This outfit isn't as big as I hope to have it someday. But there's more work here already than one man can handle alone. The young fellow I had ran out on me after tangling with a couple of Fletcher's boys in town one day. Well, I've got a job to do here. And it's too big for one man. Even for me. Will you stick here a while? And help me get things in shape for the winter? I never figured to be a, a farmer, start. But, uh, well, you've hired yourself a hand. You'll get good wages, and you'll earn them. First off now, why don't you ride into town and get some work clothes at Grafton's? Tell them to put it on my bill. <laughs> I don't like being indebted, Joe. I'll buy my own. Joe, what kind of work can a man like that do? Well, he said himself he doesn't know anything about farming. What a man knows isn't important. It's what he is that counts. We don't know what he is. Well, you didn't see how he took it when I told him about Fletcher's boys beating up the young hand we had. That's what fetched him. Oh, Fletcher scares me, Joe. If it weren't for him, we'd be happy here. I haven't made you happy? Oh, you have, Joe. I mean, this farm, it's all for you. <laughs> Paul, could you be trained to fight? That's a tough question, son. If I had to, 
I might just do it, but I'd hate to try. Some men just plain have dynamite inside them, and he's one. Who's this? It's Ernie. Afternoon, Joe. Hello there, Ernie. Marion, we've got a visitor. This must be that Mr. Shane, that peddler led you jumping. Ernie's another homesteader, Shane. Settled just along the river. Yeah. I can't make up my mind about you, Shane, what I've heard. But if Joe rates you, it can't be bad. <laughs> Ernie? Hello, Ernie. You're not fishing, Bobby? I don't like him out of my sight these days, Ernie. Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. You can rest easy for a few weeks now. I just passed by Fletcher, riding away from his ranch. I'm riding north, Mr. Homestead, he says, looking smug. I have me a big cattle deal up there. Fletcher's riding away north? And the longer he's away, the better. <sighs> we can breathe. Can I go fishing, Ma, Pa? <laughs> Take your time, Bobby. Oh, thank you, Ernie. Were you going to get back to work, Joe? Uh, Shane, if you don't mind me saying, uh, I notice you don't wear a gun. We use rifles here for hunting, maybe a shotgun. Fella don't feel dressed without something. Ernie, go easy. I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Best fishing ever, Ma. But I let them all back in the water. Shh. Now lie still and go to sleep. <clears throat> Ma? Hmm? When I was on the way back through town, a few men was arguing about Shane outside of Grafton's. Arguing what about Shane? I heard the old mule skinner say that Shane's like one of them slow-burning fuses. So quiet you forget it's burning... But then it sets off one heck of a blow when it touches powder. So quiet, you forget it's burning. Mm-hmm. And then he says, there's been trouble brewing in this valley for a long spell now. Trouble won't come, Bobby. Well, Fletch has gone away, hasn't he? I ain't worried, because Ernie's wrong. Shane has got a gun. Has he now? It's a single-action Colt. Finest pistol ever. Blue-black with two ivory plates set on each side of the grip. You shouldn't pry. I only wanted to see if it was as heavy as father's. Now close your eyes. We'll be safe here with Shane. Won't we, Ma? keep his gun hidden in the barn? Well, there are some things you don't ask a man. Not if you respect him. But you can take my word for it, Bobby. That when a man like Shane doesn't want to tote a gun, you can bet he has a good reason. You see how hard he's working out the alfalfa, son? Sure is. Bobby. Yes, Pa? See how much fodder Shane and me built up in the barns? What do you reckon? I go and buy some more cattle to eat it. Really, Pa? What about Fletcher? Fletcher ain't here to mind. You'll be safe with Shane. He'll take care of you and your ma. I'll head out this week. Listen to me, son. Don't get to liking Shane too much. Why not? Well, you'll be moving on one of these days. and You'll be all upset if you get to liking him too much. Now... Shall we go tell him the plan? Good luck, Joe. Bye, Joe. Yeah! Come on! He built this house, and he's such plans for growing it. So we're going nowhere. We're taking root. Those are my turnips, my apple tree. No bully rancher's gonna drive us out. You're a great woman, Marion. 
I've been thinking about your corral. Thought I might expand it for the new steers. Can you really lift them posts and stick them back in again on your own? Sure I can. Well, that might make a, a nice anniversary present. How so? Joe and I will have been married 15 years the days back. Is this how real gunfighters do it, Shane? Let's leave Shane to his work, Bobby. Shane taught me how to hang my gun. You can even twirl it in the air, catch it, and fire it. All in one. Like the gun's part of you, ain't it, Shane? Just like pointing a finger. I don't want him dreaming of a life like yours, Shane. Listen, Bobby. A gun is just a tool. No better or no worse than any other tool. As good or bad as the man who carries it. Remember that. I could hear Shane working all day long. A different man to cook for. He hadn't had that, I could tell. Sometimes I'd catch him looking at me. Then Joe came home. Shane! You done that all alone? And now we got a spot big enough to corral 40 head of cattle. Oh, a wee, huh? Now whose idea was that, Marion? <laughs> she rode me like she had spurs to get it done by today. Kind of a present. It's your anniversary. Well, I'll be damned. So it is. I darn forgot. <laughs> Shane, the new steer's running away. Shane! Shane! <laughs> Shane fairly lifted Joe's horse into a gallop in one leap, and the pony lit out after those steers like it was fun. Shane had them at the new corral gate in moments. He was tall and straight in Joe's saddle. If I could hold on to time, I'd take those days. The new steers, the piles of fodder ready for the winter, the corn nearly ripe, and Bobby running free. Shane and Joe working the land. Safe and hopeful days. I don't recall anybody saying Fletcher was back, but I sensed it. Some of his men were riding up and down on the other side of the brook. I went looking for Bobby. Nowhere. I couldn't find my son. Then he and Shane rode up in the wagon. Ma! Pa! Bobby, where you been? Where did you get that soda pop? Oh, the hay fork needed Smith in Marion. I said he could take the boy with him. Fletcher's back! He said someone on Shane. Fletcher's back. Mm-hmm, with a big contract in his pocket for a load of beef, and he wants his full range to run the cattle. I knew it. He's gonna push it to his limit. That's the talk in town. Fletcher's gonna try to convince you that it isn't healthy to be working with me. We shouldn't have taken him on just to make him a marked man, Joe. Fletcher sent a young fellow to taunt me while I was in Grafton's. It was Chris Pop. He kept laughing at Shane, buying soda pop. But it was for me, see? Well, you weren't inside the saloon, were you, Bobby? Then Chris says Shane smells of pigs, because he's a stinking farmer. And Shane... Shane walked away. I did. You walked? Were you scared, Shane? That boy Chris is a fool. You walked away? Went back to the blacksmith's for the pitchfork. To hit him with it? No. So we could drive away. No blood spilled. So Chris will tell it like he won it. They'll all say, like Chris won it. Shane wasn't afraid of Chris. He's afraid of himself. Inside. Now, Bobby. Then Mr. Grafton says, there's trouble ahead. The worst we've ever had. Joe blamed Shane for not standing up to Fletcher and his men. They started to ride past here and the other homesteads, making jokes about pig smells. Hooping and hollering too loud, <laughs> pretending to find themselves funny. Those fools couldn't see what it had took for Shane to walk away. And they sent Ernie to lay it out for Joe. 
can't dodge it. Your man's responsible. Chris braced himself for a fight, and Shane ducked out. Joe, we're all worried about your judgment. You know as well as I do what Fletcher's doing. He's pushing us. Yes. Yeah. Hold back. Yeah. Could you not just make Shane leave? Then things will settle. Do you believe that, Ernie? Well, I've had all the humiliation I can take. Ed can't stomach any more. The others down the creek blame you and your man Shane. Ernie, first you blame Shane for bringing trouble, then for not fighting it off. Shh, 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 shh. That's Shane. Oh, he must have been listening from the porch. Where's he heading? Uh, it looks like he's heading for town. All right. All we can do now is wait. I went outside. I didn't want to be with them while they waited. My coffee was stone cold when I watched Shane ride back in. His hat, his horse, heading towards the river, taking the fork that led to us. Thinking about how the first time he had that swift darkness and how we'd lightened him until now. Shane, what happened? Chris won't be bothering anybody for a spell. Tell us. Well, he's out stone cold, but he'll come around with nothing but a broken arm. <laughs> well, now. So, I've made a mistake, have I? Ha! Huh. <laughs> I think you've made a bad mistake. You got him to stay on here and get mixed up in this trouble with Fletcher. Chris will be all right. He's young and healthy. Soon as that arm's mended, he'll be in as good a shape as he ever was. I don't mean what you've done to Chris. I mean what you've done to Shane. You should fight your own fights. It's not me picking on Shane, Marion. It's Fletcher. Now, don't fret. I'll fight for this place. I put everything into it, didn't I? A home for you and Bobby. And Shane's put work into it, too. I see him pacing the corral, looking up at that loft full of hay. He thinks it's worth fighting for. He fought his fight in another valley. Oh, he's learned about the land with us. I'm going to check the fences. Wait, Joe. Joe! Marion. Fine evening. Come and sit down, Shane. I've been wanting to talk to you alone. You've been worrying, haven't you, about what may happen in this Fletcher business? Or you thought it would just be a case of helping us through a hard time. You didn't know it would come to real fighting. And you're scared of what you might do. You're a discerning woman. You've been worrying about something else, too. You're a mighty discerning woman, Marion. And you've been thinking of moving on. How did you know? Because it's what you ought to do, for your own sake. Right out of this valley, away from what's simmering. Don't go, Shane. Joe needs you, more than ever now. More than he would ever say. And you? Yes. I need you, too. Do you know what you're asking, Marion? I know. But we can't let Joe down. I'm counting on you to never make me do that. Please stay, Shane. Joe can't buck Fletcher alone. He promised me this place when we were married. He did two men's work to get the money for the things we would need. He filed his claim and he built this house with his own hands, so, you see... Joe should be proud of a wife like you. Don't fret, Marion. You're not going to lose this place. But that Fletcher is a mean and tricky man. I said you won't lose this place.
Things quieted down after Shane beat Chris. Quiet like before a storm. It's the ordinary days that throw you. The days you think are going just as you'd expect them to. Like the day we set out for town, for supplies at Grafton's. It was a beautiful fall day, clear and stirring. Fletcher was away again, and his men had been lying low. So Shane went ahead of us, on his own into the saloon. Joe and I collected our orders at the store, then went to find him. We walked right into the middle of it. <laughs> Fellas strewn about that Shane had fought off single-handed, and he'd have fought off more except that Fletcher's foreman, a sour fella called Morgan, smashed a bottle down on Shane's head. Two other men took hold of Shane and one of them pulled his arm back for a knockout. Joe! Joe, help him! I've never seen Joe like that. He hurtled into Morgan and sent him reeling. Shane was free, flying, fighting fit, lied, zinging. And Joe was so muscular, so strong. I couldn't join in. I couldn't move away. Morgan's mine. I'll finish him. You leave Morgan to me, Joe. You better get Marion out of here. Wait at the wagon, Marion. Morgan's had this coming in for quite a long time, and it is not for a woman to see. <laughs> Does that hurt? No, no, it's just fine. And that's some cut. Still bleeding a bit. Mm. I'll start a fresh rag. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one side done. <laughs> Should have dodged that bottle. <laughs> what did you do with the thick one, Joe, when I was busy with the redhead? Oh, I just kind of tucked him out of the way. He picked him up like a sack of potatoes and threw him across the room. There. <clears throat> it's clean now. You want a bandage on it? No, thank you. Air is the best medicine. Does it hurt, Shane? Bobby, I asked you to go to bed. I can't sleep. Bobby, bed. Oh. <laughs> you were magnificent, Joe, tearing that man away. Oh, I was just peeved. Him holding Shane so Morgan can pound him? And you, Shane, you were magnificent, too. You were so cool and quick with Morgan. A woman shouldn't have to see things like that. Because it's brutal and nasty? Of course it is. But you didn't start it. You didn't want to do it. Not until they made you. You did it because you had to. How did ever a woman have two such men? <sighs> <clears throat> Good night, Joe. Marion. Good night. Good night. When Shane passed by, he put his hand gently on my head. I noticed his fingers, because of farmer's fingers. The skin gets rough over the years. But Shane's. Then he walked quietly out into the night. Do you think I don't know, Marion? How can you, when I don't know myself? A man enough to know a better when his trail meets mine. Oh, Joe, kiss me. Hold me tight. Fletcher won't take this lying down. It'll be now or never for him. Oh. Shane! Morning. Morning. How's the wound? Oh, it uh throbbed pretty good all night. What do you reckon, Shane? Fletcher will make some legal move against us? Depends on how far he's willing to go. Who's that? 
It's Ernie. They've killed him. Murdered. Ernie, what happened? You got anything stronger than coffee, Mrs. Starrett? Ernie, catch your breath. Yeah. We were in town fetching a parcel Ed was expecting. We went to the bar at Grafton's. There was Fletcher at the poker table, and this stranger with him. Oh, Fletcher's back again. Been to fetch a man for hire. Well, we should have walked straight out again. Go on. Soon as we showed up, Fletcher and his new friend threw in their hands and joined us at the bar. Oh, we, we, we should have left. Go we, on we, now. We sh- uh, Fletcher's polite. Says he's really sorry, but he needs the land Ed's filed on to put up winter shelters for the new herds he's bringing. He says he was willing to pay a fair price. Ed's turned him down three or four times before, and he sees straight through this smooth talk, which is for show. And Ed says, no, I'm not selling. Not now or ever. So Fletcher gives a nod to the stranger. And this stranger's smiling at Ed. But his eyes have nothing like a smile in them. What's this stranger look like? Tall, sort of swaggering, glitter in his eyes. Under his coat, he carries two big guns in low holsters with thin straps tied to his legs. Like killing was his thing. Name is Stark Wilson. What happened next? Wilson starts niggling him, saying, I'd sell up if I were you. Says he's Fletcher's new business agent. But Ed's having none of it. And Wilson calls him a jackass. And worse, he calls him a breed. A crossbred squatter. And Ed don't like it when people say his mother was an Indian. It can't hold back. Spits and calls a stranger a goddamn liar. Wilson's pushing him to one end. All I can hear is the tick-tock of the clock behind the bar. Wilson has him where he wants him. So, says Wilson, and he flicks back his dude coat, and there's his gun. And Ed knows. Oh, I can see Ed's anger and his terror fighting it out in him. But he met it straight. He was just pulling his gun up when Wilson's bullet hit him. Oh, poor Ed. Yeah, and Wilson will claim he shot in self-defense. Oh, what chance have us homesteaders got? We're not gunmen. We're we're just farmers. Call it anything you want. I call it murder. Yeah, however you trick it, it's murder. Fletcher's come home with a killer. He ain't bothering with legals. He's in for the kill. I'm sorry, Joe. I don't have your heart. I'm gonna sell and run. No, no, Ernie. Don't let Fletcher win. Together we can fight him. Fletcher won't bother with the likes of you, Ernie. Next, he'll head straight for the one real man in this valley. Joe Starrett. Shane, you seem to know a lot about this kind of dirty business. I do. Say it plain. What's going to happen next? Fletcher will move straight in on Ed's place tomorrow. Push cattle through it. Then he'll tell Wilson to taunt you, same as he did Ed, all the way. He'll say he shot you defending his honor. Yeah, that ring's right. Ernie, yeah. gather the homesteaders together for Ed's funeral tomorrow. Yeah. And once he's buried, we don't go into town again. Not till this thing's decided. Yeah. Until tomorrow, then. Until tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know it would come to kill him. Maybe you should leave, Shane. He's out to get me. I ain't leaving. Or just keep away from anywhere you might meet Wilson. Both of you. Things will fizzle out. Fletcher can't keep a killer like Wilson in this little valley forever. No, Marion. A man can't crawl into a hole somewhere and hide like a rabbit. Joe's right. Shane? Shane? Shane, where are you going? Joe? Joe, go follow him. Find out what's on his mind, please. Some old memory, I reckon. This morning, 
Our friend Ed was laid in the ground. While the men were pushing the soil over Ed's coffin, Fletcher and Wilson must have been already saddling up to ride over here. Ed had a right good funeral. The town's turned against Fletcher for this. Soon as this thing's settled, Mary, and that husband of yours will make a good mayor. Speech he made. Listen. Horses. That's Fletcher, Joe. I knew he'd come. You're gone, Joe. There's two of them, Father. Stay inside, son. Come to me. There's two, all right. It's true, then. Fletcher's hired himself a killer. Don't rise to him, Joe. Don't lift your rifle. Speak your peace, Fletcher. Then get off my land. I want all the rage I could get, Joe Starrett. I was here first. I can't let a bunch of nesters like you choke me and my steers off. We've been through this before. I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> this the man murdered our friend yesterday? Your friend insulted Mr. Wilson here when all he did was ask him to leave his land. It was a fair draw. From what we hear, it was murder. There's no call for you and I to quarrel like that, Joe Start. I admire you. Since you proved up on this little place, I'll buy it from you. I'll give you a thousand dollars for the place as it stands. No. There's no percentage in being hasty, Start. I'll boost the ante to 1,200. That's a lot better than what might happen if you stick to being stubborn. I'll not take an answer now. I'll give you till tonight to think it over. Bring your answer to town tonight. Yeah, Joe Starrett. You think now. What might come of you being stubborn? You wouldn't like someone else to be enjoying this place of yours. And that woman there in the window. <laughs> Don't lift your gun, Joe. That's what he wants. This ain't your fight, mister. You talk like a man, Wilson, because of that flashy hardware you're toting. You strip those guns away and you'd shrivel down to boy size. <laughs> Ain't you a pair? Tonight, Joe, I'll be waiting for you at the saloon. Sell up or else. Both of you acted like fools just now, risking your lives just because he insulted me? Marion, what better reason could a man have? Yes. What better reason? Let's sit here on the porch together. Marion, here. Shane, take the rocker. Y'all know what my answer to Fletcher must be. This is our home. Fletcher's in for the kill, Joe. I won't budge, Marion. I made this for you. I'll fight to keep you in it. You're only a farmer. When I said you should fight for our home, I didn't know it meant guns. Well, I can't beat Wilson on the draw. So this is what I see. He shoots me. But I'm strong. I can hold on long enough to get him too before I fall. And as long as Wilson goes down, that'll be the end to it. Fletcher will be done for. This place, and you, Marion, and the boy, you'll be safe. Wilson's bullets ain't half-hearted. It helps a man to know that if he dies fighting, his family will be left in better hands than his own. Shane. Shane, wait, don't. Pa. Bobby, come close. We're going to tell Fletcher at dusk. What's right? You need Shane to back you up, Joe. You can't do this alone. 
You speak to him, Marion. Anyone can stir Shane up for a fight. It's you. Look! There he is! Down by the pasture! Shane! Shane! Shane. He was staring over the grazing steers to the great lonely mountains he first came from. Mountains tipped with gold by the sun rushing down behind them. Then he lifts his arms, stretches his fingers up and up to the glory glowing in the sky. Ma! Ma! Shane says everything's going to be all right. Is he leaving us? Shane's got his gun. And then I see him, dressed as he was that first day when he rode into our lives, in that dark and worn magnificence. I can't take my eyes off the ivory on the grip of his gun, belt and holster and gun, a part of him. Marion, Joe, Bobby. No, Shane. This is my business. You're wrong, Joe. This is my kind of business. Damn it, Shane. Be sensible. Don't make it harder for me. Come and back me up with your fist, but not a gunfight. Joe, I'm making this my business. Stay home. I couldn't hold my head up around here anymore. They'd say I ducked and sent a sidekick, and they'd be right. You can't do it, and that's that. No. I'm sorry, Joe, but... <clears throat> Oh, Joe! Joe! <sighs> I apologize, Marion, but I was afraid he'd fight me. He wanted to be there. Wilson is a killer. He knows shooting like Joe knows cattle. Joe couldn't win. Oh, Joe. He'll be a little groggy, but he'll come out all right. You tell him no man need be ashamed of being beaten by me. He already called you the better man. Shane, you and I have battered down words that might have been spoken between us. And that was as it should be. But I have a right to know now. Are you doing this just for me? No, Marion. Could I separate you from Joe in my mind and afterwards be a man? I didn't move as he left. Shane quietly, easily slipped away into the night, wearing a gun for the first time in this valley, like our angel, our dark angel. Oh. Shh. You'll be fine, Joe. Bobby, come and sit with your father while I... Bobby? Bobby, where are you? Bobby! I can see two figures against the last lights on the horizon. And one is a man on a horse, going to kill or be killed. And the other is a boy, running some ways behind, toward town. Bobby! Shane! Bobby! Shane! He killed Wilson and Fletcher. All our troubles are over. Fletcher, too. Mm, he would do it right. <laughs> it's good that he knocked you out before he left, Start. Only another gunfighter could face down Wilson. Waiting here was the hardest thing I ever did. Wilson got to him, but no one bullet can kill that man. Where is he? He's gone. Gone alone and unfollowed as he wanted it. Out of the valley and to who knows where. Gone? <laughs> yeah. I'll be on my way. You did good, Joe. Well, I don't know where Bobby here and 
Marion would be without you, Ernie. The boy saw the whole thing. I found Mrs. Starrett here on the road. I don't know what she saw. Well, good night. I'm going outside for some air. Wait, Joe. Don't go. I lost Bobby. I, I had to go find our boy. I understand, Marion. There. All tucked in. Now tell me everything as it happened. I, I ran behind him all the way. Then he saw me. I called after him, but he turned and rode on through the valley, heading for town. Was he nervous? <clears throat> Not Shane. I don't think they were expecting him at the saloon. He went silent when Shane came in through the doors. Stark was shocked to see him. They were expecting father. Shane kept asking, where's Fletcher? Then Stark Wilson says, where's Joe Starrett? It's Joe Starrett I want. And Shane says, what you want and what you'll get, Wilson, are two different things. Your killing days are done. Wilson went for a second gun. That's when blood started spreading on Shane's shirt. Wilson got him. And then the roar of another shot. You weren't safe there, Bobby. It was Fletcher, up in the gallery. Shane whirled round in one single flash to shoot him. He lined his barrel up by pointing his finger. I could see the flame. And then Fletcher was rocking. He fell over the rail and brought the whole thing down with him. I wish I could have seen it. Then Shane said, I expect that finishes it. But what about the blood on his shirt? I haven't finished yet, Ma. I ran. Shane! Come home, Shane! There's no going back from a killing, Bob. It's up to you now. Go to your mother and father. Grow strong and straight and take care of them. Both of them. In the moonlight, I could just make him out. A cloud passed over the moon, and I couldn't see him. And then the cloud passed on, and the road was empty. He was gone. Ma? Yes, Bobby? If Shane had stayed, he wouldn't be Shane. That's right. That's right, son. Now go to sleep. It's nearly dawn. I'll go and find Father. He won't be far. Joe. Joe, come back inside. Marion, I'm sick of the side of this valley and all that's in it. I know it's hard on you and the boy. Well, we'll have to pull up stakes and move on. Montana, maybe. Joe Starrett. So you'd run out on Shane just when he's really here to stay? Shane's gone. He's not gone. He's here. In this place. In this place he gave us. He's all around us and in us, and he always will be. Well, take this post. Pull it out. Pull it out, then. Pull! You can't. You see, Joe, you see what I mean? We have roots here now that we can never tear loose. We love our home. We love each other. Don't we? Don't we, Joe? I sometimes dream that Shane's blood stopped spreading. And sometimes that it didn't. I look out at the purple mountains and remember him coming. Slowly, slowly taking the fork to us, eyes like fire. He rode into our little valley, out of the heart of the great glowing west. 
And when his work was done, he wrote on. So my own boy could grow into a man and take root. Shane was played by Joshua Stamberg. Marion Starrett was Jennifer Westfeld. Joe Starrett, Jeff Mash, and Bobby was Finley Jacobson. The music was by Fernando Macias Jimenez. It was adapted from Jack Schaefer's novel by Francis Burns, and it was produced and directed by Kate McCall. <laughs>